Although in the humanity we believe that our development is a continuous growth line, we keep repeating the same mistakes and not only as individuals, but collectively. I mean cities, nations, regions, cultures. Look at the housing crisis we are moving to. It's not the first and even the second one. We keep trying the same approaches to cure it, but it brings us back to the same problems. Over and over and over again. We are stuck in the housing development loop. I made this video right before Russia made Ukraine. I just couldn't publish it and I couldn't educate you. Well, my family has to hide in the basement for a month. But I decided to publish it and ask for your advice. One day or another we will have to rebuild our destroyed cities and um, it's not like something everybody knows how to do. But there is definitely some already experience in the world so if you know any examples if you know any articles anything i don't know just please uh, leave some information in the comments if that can be quite helpful thanks the housing crisis topic getting hot lately look at the housing progress in the netherlands and germany or all these financial advices on youtube none of this gives you a feeling that things are under control what happened actually it has been developing already for some time the latest housing progress showed that the market can't provide homes not only to the poor but also to some parts of the middle class the society anger went even further in berlin where they managed to pass the referendum on expropriation of uh, 3,000 apartments from big international landlords' organizations. Both the Netherlands and Germany have a strong history in a social or affordable housing, and the housing sector got through liberalization and shift toward the free market just in the last few decades. So, in the last 10 or so years, they experienced just an astronomical housing price jump. Wait a minute, is this actually happening or oh, I'm having a déjà vu? At the end of 19th century and the beginning of 20th century, the housing situation was dreadful. It was with fast-growing urbanization, it was impossible to provide enough shelter for newcomers by using old-fashioned approaches. When each building was built by an individual commission, it was too slow. That's why housing corporations and syndicates emerge. Some elites and factory owners tried to solve this issue too, so big money came to the housing arena and with a flink of the finger it switched to the market. That led to housing commodification, speculations, evictions and so on. Sounds similar, no? This is well described in the classic text of the house in question by Frederick Engels. And it didn't take long till people get fed up and went on protests like Govan's strike in Glasgow. The new political movements were there to solve social issues like this. Socialists, social democrats, communists and even fascists I don't feel comfortable even pronounce this word Try to fix it by going into completely opposite direction by introducing more regulations and in some cases over-regulating the housing market increasing municipal stock like in Vienna or completely extracting housing from the market like in USSR or Yugoslavia Comrades, if shelter is a basic human need stated in the constitution then the public sector should provide it in that period, we also got rental social or affordable housing provided by cities or non-profit organizations. At the same time, collaborative and self-help housing models got more popular. Let's check in the future if it helped. But it was hard for municipalities to keep up with growing urbanization. Social and affordable housing cost a lot. And also it's too complex to manage it from one central institution. Once again, we went back to market-led housing when in the 70s the new liberalism started its crusades. Oh no. It looks like we're stuck in the housing development loop and the housing history repeats again and again. Over and over and over again. We went through this loop more or less in a century. Now, again, we see extensive commodification of the housing stock. Maybe Vienna is still an exception where most of the housing stock is still a municipal affordable one. We need to build more, right? 
But why the hell all the basic law of market equilibrium doesn't work here? Why do we keep building more and more, but the problem isn't even nearly solved? There are two reasons for that. First of all, to build more, we need more land. And this is something that we simply can't produce. Mm -hmm. Unless you're a Dutch or Sheikh from Dubai. So, the more we want to build, the higher the land price is. That's, and that's why the basic market graph simply doesn't work here. It's right at the opposite one. Respectively, it pushes the houses' prices up. Secondly, there is a gap between what kind of homes we need and what kind of property is currently profitable to build. There is an obvious lack of housing in the low and middle income target groups. Yeah, and I was in the issues just a few years ago when we were homeless for a few months. A household of an architect and a lawyer with several master degrees both. We simply got into the gap between the market rental houses and social housing. So the issue is that the new development target investors and not ones who seek in homes, one of the most most prominent example of that is this half-empty skyscraper in Manhattan. The reason it was built was not to be used. It's rather a pleasant addition. The main goal of this development was to invest. To explain the consequences of this, I have to use my Lego friends who kindly agreed to facilitate me in this. You might know this guy, Emmett. Let's say together with his partner, they are ready to buy their own place. Ah yes. He has to do it with a partner, otherwise he's screwed. Besides that, he has to compete not only with the other figures that just want their own homes, but also with so-called rentiers, individuals on local, uh, local or international that want to buy a few properties to rent it out. And, in, and if this is not competitive enough for you, there are also big organizations like investment funds, insurance companies, pension funds, also local and international, that buy these properties in bulk. How big are chances of our friend Emmett? <laughs> Price is going up and he needs to keep renting his place and trying to save more money as, also, as others do. Meanwhile, there are new students, young professionals, migrants, ready to rent a place as Emmett does. You know where I'm going, right? The rental prices are going up, so our friend Emmett also struggles with savings. In this case, building more facilitates mainly for developers, rentiers, investors, and us, urban planners, designers, architects. Well, doesn't have enough impact on the housing issue, and it's the municipality role to make sure that it gives the land and permissions that will serve actual housing needs. Okay, if people can save enough money to buy a home, let's give them more mortgages, right? Wrong. It doesn't, want, it doesn't work out easy. As Ryan Collins, I hope I pronounced his surname right, showed in his book Why Can't You Afford a Home, the housing prices rise proportionally to the amount of given mortgages. Since banks can kind of create the virtual money when they lend them to you, I probably should make another video about this book. What do you think? In this case, financiers mainly benefit from the situation, but it doesn't solve the systematic issues either. Oh yeah, this is the situation we're in. We keep bumping into the same obstacles, trying to fix them with the same mindset and tools. Repeat this program. Over and over and over again. If we want to break through this, we have to go through the economic, political, law and social changes. And meanwhile, I'm preparing another video on how different actors trying to break through this loop. You can check my video on alternative housing models and all the sources that I use for this video in the description. I also can't just cheerfully say goodbye to you. Once again, I want to remind you that if you know any examples, articles that could be helpful, please leave them in the comments. And uh, I would like to have a bit of silence for all those who Oh, no, Daniel.